I believe, I believe very much what Daniel chapter 12 says, that, the, that in the last days, knowledge will be increased, and that's spiritual knowledge. Daniel was even told that his book would not be totally understood. And now, with the rise of fanatical Islam, with the rise of ISIS, with the rise of uh, the, the idea of the Mahdi, who's supposed to come on a white horse, this is the Islamic Messiah, of course, uh, beheading of people. All of this is fitting into those prophecies that people never did understand. And I believe it's a time to understand the mysteries of God and to understand those things that have been concealed for a generation. And there are things concealed only for a particular generation. Uh, someone asked me the other day, they said, if, if, if the rapture teaching or the coming of the Lord teaching was so prominent in Scripture. Why wasn't it taught during the time of the Reformation, 1800s, 1700s? And my answer was very simple. How can you teach on something when there's no signs being fulfilled saying it's the last days? Israel was not a nation then. Jerusalem was not the capital. The Jews were scattered across the earth. Israel was a swamp and a desert. And Israel had to be a nation. Jerusalem has to be the capital. The Jews have to return. The land has to blossom like a rose. Israel has to fill the world with fruit. That's five of ten major prodigies that have to happen. And so when it's not... What, what is a prodigy? Uh, it's an omen, a sign, an indicator. And so in other words... The, the is so all the signs are here. Yeah, Israel, Israel, Jerusalem, and the Hebrew people, whether people want to believe this or not, are the indicator of the Messiah's return. And it goes back to that prophecy in Daniel, Daniel, Daniel 70 weeks. The Gentile church was grafted in at the end of the 69th week with Jesus' resurrection. And there's been this Gentile body predominantly since that time. And now the Jewish people are now being reached, which is a Romans 11 sign. And when God opens the eyes of the Jewish people, now this is in Romans 11, this shocks some people, He will eventually close the door of the Gentile, and that door will close through the rapture of the church coming for the church, Jesus coming for the church. Then He focuses all of His attention back to Israel. The book of Revelation is very clear about that. The last days, that tribulation period, is one focus. Not the church, not believers. It's the focus on the, the, the the, the, holy, the, the holy ones of Israel, the Jewish remnant, etc. It's a focus to them. But you were told information that I have never heard anywhere before mm -hmm. that in four years mm -hmm. Israel will no longer be dependent on America? Yeah, and let me, without giving, divulging the person, uh, it's a very noted professor with a university who's very connected with the Knesset and the Israeli leaders. And we were spending hours together, t just him and I discussing. He said, I'm going to tell you something that's going to shock you. He said, in four years, Israel will no longer need the United States. In 1996, and I won't go into detail about this, when I saw the Trade Center shrouded in black with five gray tornadoes coming off of it. Our partners heard me t preach this in 1999. And when the, when the Trade Center attack happened, I knew that's what that was. I had an incident. Uh, I, I talked about this publicly off the coast of Louisiana. There would be an oil rig. Something happened to an oil rig that would cause the economy to, to really have havoc there. And I even called a pastor in Louisiana and told him when the BP oil spill happened, it was a fulfillment of the five things I saw. The most recent one said, however, it deals with tsunamis. I probably once every two weeks, I'll have a, a, a dream of a tsunami. And the odd Once thing, every two weeks, oh, every, I don't want that to it, slip by. It's, it's getting, I don't mean this in a negative, it's, it's getting ridiculous almost to the number of times it happens. And my wife keeps saying, why are you keep having these? I said, honey, the only thing I can figure is the Lord's given us a warning. The odd thing is one, one appeared to have been on the West Coast and the other was very strong on the East Coast, which I thought was a little odd. But let me just tell you where I was, and I'm not going to name the city. I'm going to ask people never to contact me and ask me. I will only release it if the Holy Spirit tells me, mm -hmm. because it creates fear in people, right. and you, you, we shouldn't do that. However, um, we were in a, we were near, we were near water in this vision, and my wife and I and my family were together, and it was a two-story duplex. It's almost like we were staying in the area, and I, there, I saw uh, the city. It's a very beautiful city. And uh, uh, the dark clouds were forming above it, and I knew a storm was coming. A storm can be spiritual, it can be natural. And uh, when I turned, I remember telling my wife, and I'm, I'm reducing parts of this to get to the point, uh, we, something big is about to happen. We've got to get everybody into safety. Something big is about to happen. And I went over to the, uh, the, the top story now. I'm on the second floor. I looked through this glass window, huge, beautiful glass window, and you could see two things. You could see a very beautiful bridge, and you could see water. And all of a sudden, three things happened at once. The first thing is I saw, you, you, you've seen the big interstate signs that tell you what city you're going to. Or, or, this one named a city that I'll leave out. But this bridge connects to that city, because I checked it out the next day on a map. 
of, of this type of bridge. And I saw a tsunami wave hit. I, I, I don't want to estimate. It could have been 50 to 70 feet high. It was the biggest thing I've ever seen. And when it came in, then I saw the bridge buckle and the bridge collapse. Now, it almost looked to me as though the bridge was, there was an explosion at the base of the bridge. And I couldn't figure if the tsunami was caused by some kind of sea explosion and the bridge was separate. But here's what I did see that shocked me. I saw, the only way for me to describe this is to talk, to say they were the, it was the Twin Towers coming up out of the water in a ghostly look, real ghostly, real, uh, uh, not, uh, not a hologram, but it was just like a, like a ghost. I, this is the only way I can describe it. And they came up out of the water and disappeared into the atmosphere. And this wave came in and was hitting the first and second levels of these buildings. And when I saw the Trade Center, the first thing when I woke up, I said, oh, Lord, or I came out of this vision. I call it a dream vision because it's very real, very precise. Mm -hmm. The first thing I thought about was, okay, was the bridge in a terrorist attack? Did they get underneath the bridge right. and blow a bridge up? That was my first thought because I saw the towers, which was a terrorist attack. So I'm not sure if the bridge is connected to the terrorist attack, but the tsunami was natural. But I'm telling you, it, it, is, it is absolutely... Uh, Sid, in one and a half, in 10 days, I had three dreams of a tsunami, but they were three-dimensional, full color. You know the difference between just a dream and what I call but, but a the, night dream. But you know the fact that it's, you keep having these it's same, dreams, it's the same, this yeah. tells me that it's yeah. going to happen yeah, in a short period of time. Yeah, and in one of them, I never will forget this, there was a solid white rock. A solid white rock. When the 9-11 attack happened and I had the vision of the tower shrouded in black, I'm running down saying we have to get in the rock, we have to get in the rock. The rock is Christ. And I was saying when I had the 9-11 vision in 1996, and some of the folks that followed our ministry will know that. And they, we had pictures. I had pictures drawn of it in 1999. And you know about that. And I remember saying twice, we have to get to the cleft of the rock, we have to hide in the rock, which is Christ. Uh, just a few weeks ago when I had the one tsunami dream, I was climbing into, you know what the garden tomb looks like in Israel? Of course. It was, this was solid rock with an opening, and the water was not coming into this opening that I was into. It was passing me, but it was just water everywhere. And the Lord just showed me, He said, this is the cleft of the rock. The, I am the rock. I'm the foundation. And all people need to understand is be hidden in me. Be hidden in my presence. Know my presence. Know how to pray. Know how to walk with me. And I would say this to anybody watching me right now, and that is the greatest thing I could say to you with the last days is what Jesus said, do not be afraid. Believers don't have to be afraid. The world has to be afraid. You know, you know, Sinners if, should be terrified, okay? If I'm a sinner, I would be terrified. But, but not, not the believer that knows the end of the story. But we have to be informed. We have to be informed to inform our loved ones who are not saved. I want people to know, have knowledge, be informed, not to be in darkness that the day overtakes us unaware. But you've got to fill yourself with knowledge so that you can sit down when things happen and say, look here, this was predictive. This was, God is real. God gives us prophecy to prove He's real because He foretells it thousands of years in advance and then He does it and we get to see it. I, I have to ask you this. Yeah. It seems as though everything is happening so quickly, uh -huh. the bad, the good, the ugly, everything <laughs> yeah. in the Bible is, is why you call it a prophetic crunch time. Explain that. Okay. God counts time by sabbatical cycles. God, God counts uh, uh, times by covenant. And God, in fact, there's different ways God counts time, okay? Now, one of the things that begins to happen, there's a, there's a verse in Matthew 24 where Jesus said, there'll be wars, rumors of wars, famines, pestilence, and right. earthquake. The skeptic says to me, that's always been happening. Why do you get so caught up on that? It's been going on since the beginning of time almost. But in one other, same Luke 21, uh, Mark 13, Matthew 24, one of the writers says this, when all these things begin to come to pass, all these things combined, now there's your clue. Never has there been a time. I was reading the other day how many wars and rumors of wars are more than in history right now, whether it's Africa, whether it's Middle East, more than any time in history as far as the whole world's concerned. Number of earthquakes have increased in intensity. And uh, even in the United States, we're having, uh, Connecticut's having earthquakes. Are you kidding me? Oklahoma has so many a day. Are you kidding me? These are places that you never hear of. They just, they just found out there's a two-mile two fault line that runs through Irvine, California, uh, Texas, Irvine, Texas, right there. These are places you never hear of, okay? And then, when, so in other words, when all these things begin to come to pass at once, that's how Jesus said, you're in the last days. That's when you need to start looking up and lifting up your head for your redemption is drawing nigh.
Could Hitler's horrible deeds that he did be ready to be repeated? Could that be? Could it be? I have had three Jewish women in their late 80s, all that were Holocaust survivors. One was five years old when she personally met Hitler. He came out of the truck, uh, out of his security vehicle, walked up to her, put his hand on her and said, what a beautiful blonde haired, blue eyed Aryan girl. And she was Jewish. She accepted the Lord. And she, th these three women said to me on three different occasions, now this has happened, Sid, the past three years. It's 1933 all over again and America can't see it. The Nazi party took over the banking system. They took over uh, all regulations. They regulated what you could eat. They regulated the type of table you had to have in a restaurant. They took over the uh, health care system. Germany had great health care until Hitler socialized it. Hmm. And they went through 15 things. And I can't go through all of those, of course. But they went through 15. These are, you know, these are women who survived the Holocaust. They went through 15 things that said it would blow your mind. All 15 are happening right now in the United States. And simultaneous to this, blood moons mm -hmm. all over the map. Yeah. What is the area that most are not speaking about? I'm going to give you two. In the same setting of the blood moon cycle, it's, there's going to be signs of blood, fire, and pillars of smoke. I did a lot of research and found out this was volcanic eruptions. When the first blood moon happened in April 15th of 2014, that day a volcano was erupting. For the next couple months, volcanoes started erupting all over the earth. When you see the volcanic eruptions come in line with the blood moons, then we know this is not just some, another cycle of blood moons, but it actually is a sign of the end. The thing said that thrilled me, I've got to get into this, that I never saw anybody tap into was the three recent blood moon cycles in 70 years. And watch how they're connected. Here we go. One was in 1949 and 50. That was after Israel was restored as a nation. One was in 1967 and 68. That was after Jerusalem was reunited as the capital of Israel. And the next series is 2014, of course, 2015. Now watch what happens. In 1949 and 50 was the great healing revival where most of the young men in it were under 30 years of age. They were young men heading up this healing revival. Oral Roberts started preaching at age 30 in 1948. Morris Sorella was only 17 years of age. Mm. Okay, they were young men. You, so you don't, don't think of that. You don't yeah. think of that right now, but they were all young, all under 30 practically. Now, watch this. I love it. The second wave of blood moon, 67, 68, was the charismatic renewal. The official date of the charismatic renewal was June 1967. This is what absolutely, you know, now my hair's standing up right now. You have to just bear with me a minute. I feel this quickening of the spirit. What's happening in 2014, 2015 in, in the cycle that we're in with, it, with this series of blood moons that fall on Passover and Tabernacles back to back is the last day outpouring of the spirit on sons and daughters. Sid, we're in it right now. Just like there was a healing revival in the first cycle of Blood Moon, there was a charismatic renewal. This is the sons and daughters outpouring. Well, what's going on with the young people and you? Oh, right listen, li listen to this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be 56 years of age, okay? But God told me I was going to father a generation. I didn't even know what that meant. Last year, we had 4,100 young people show up at a conference. Over 500 were saved and 500 baptized in the Holy Spirit. This year, 6,000 to, we, we had to cut off registration. You, you mean young, cut pe off. young people are so hungry for God, just as it was prophesied just like that they prophesied. would be the sons and the daughters, that they can't fit all of them in their building. It's incredible. And it's just not with us. It's, I, could, I could name other ministries, but there's other youth ministries that are having 5, 6, 10, 15, 6, 20,000, 30,000 kids show up. And Sid, the great thing about it is they want the move of the Holy Spirit. That's what they're craving. I'm going to tell you something. It's incredible. Parent. We're coming to a time. These young people are going to get radically saved. Oh, I absolutely. mean, they're going to be, for lack of better words, they're going to be normal. Normal <laughs> as defined by the Bible. Yes, yes, yes. And, and they're not going to... I believe it. They, I believe they are that. not going to tolerate lukewarm, seeker-sensitive no. religion. No. They want reality. Absolutely. And I'll tell you what, it's not just the young people that want reality. We all want reality. Yes, yes. Amen.